Welcome to Watts 3010 Introduction to Web Development. This course is part of the Certificate in Web De Technology and Application Studies at Seattle University. I'm Becky Peltz and I'm going to walk you through the set of tutorials for the Skills 1 repo which teach you the basics of HTML and CSS. There will be a separate video for each tutorial in this Skills 1 repo. You will only have to fork the repo once and publish the GH pages once, but I'll point out this in every video. The Skills 1 tutorial prepares you for Project 1, a page with internal navigation. So in this video, um, we're in the Skills 1 repo, which I'm assuming you've forked and cloned locally and are ready to work on. We're going to be working on some techniques for horizontal layout. And what we're going to be doing is transforming, uh, we're here in the code, we're given an index HTML. And if you look at it, you've got a couple of unordered lists. So you see the bullet points. The ordered list, of course, would have one, two, three, but the unordered list is going to get rendered with bullet points by default. And there's some links on here. Um, and uh, you can see that in the footer we have a copyright and a, the name of the writer. And what's going to happen, what we're going to try to get to is a, a design like this where you can see that the the links maybe it's clearer out here down here you can see that we've turned these links into a horizontal layout so this looks like a nav bar where we have a home blog and about um, and then our social links here LinkedIn Facebook Twitter they're somewhat styled like um, like um, little tags and little buttons um, and they are horizontally laid out and then we have a horizontal layout here with our copyright and the name of our writer who in which we pull the copyright all the way to the right and we pull or to the left and we pull the name to the right so we've got three different techniques here and we're going to learn um, how to get this nav bar set up and these uh, horizontally aligned social links and then this pull left pull right footer so let's take a look here at the readme a little bit closer and in this readme there's there's a, a lot of instruction so you you want to maybe take a read through that because you're going to start using anchor tags and the anchor tags are that these are kind of like what makes the web the web. This is what gives you links that can take you to other internet pages or other pages within your website or even different content within a single page. So we'll be setting those up and navigation bars are all about providing links to allow the user to, to move around. And we're going to also learn about list elements. So we'll be using those unordered lists. And they are semantic because we have like lists of places to go, lists of social links that we are offering up. And we're going to learn how to style them. We're going to be using three different techniques for doing the horizontal. We're going to use the display inline block, um, which gives us the the ability to make elements both inline and block. We've talked about like uh, inline elements as being only, uh, you know, they don't cause you to go to the next line. They're just, um, they, they just continue on in the line. Whereas block elements take up a whole line, but they allow you to add dimension like height to them. And by getting inline block, we're able to put things horizontally, but still may be able to style them vertically to uh, so give them some height dimension. We're also going to look at floats. So floating left is another way, that, and floating left and right are ways to put elements on a single horizontal line. And we're also going to look at the position property. And it's a it, there are a number of different um, values that the position property can take. And we'll be looking at relative and absolute and seeing a technique where you combine um, a relative container with absolutely positioned elements within it. And absolute position allows you to specify by pixel, by percentage, 
how that element, let's say this button, sits relative to the left and the bottom, or it could be any one of the, you know, top right, bottom left sides, you can position with absolute precision to that. So we're going to learn those three techniques, and we'll start off um, by looking at the requirements, um, where basically we're going to be adding a style sheet to the index.html, and then styling the nav bar using float left, styling social links using inline block, and styling the footer using positioning. All right. All right, so we're going to start in here with adding a style sheet to index. So that just involves creating a folder for CSS and a file. And the reason why I create a folder, even though we only have one file, often there can be multiple files for CSS. And so just getting into the habit of creating a folder is a good idea. And when I get this CSS, it's going to be empty for now. But I'm going to want to link that in to in the head section of the HTML. <clears throat> so link rel equal style sheet. And you'll notice I've been putting rel equal style sheet as the first attribute. But in reality, there's no, the order of the attributes doesn't make any difference. It's, but for consistency, it's, it's nice to have them the same. Um, and so that gets our style sheet in there. And then if I open this up, I'm ready to start working on the nav bar. And again, just to remind you, the nav bar currently, we've got this unordered list with bullet points. <clears throat> Three levels. We've got a um, we've got our nav, we've got a UL, and we've got our LI. Actually, four levels because we've, then we've got our anchor tag, which actually contains the words that you see. So we've got our list, our items, and the contents is an anchor tag, which is going to give us a link. So you get that underlined effect. Um, and the link is clickable. It's one of the interactive elements. Um, so we're going to do some styling on that. So first of all, we're going to style the UL. And you can see that I'm specifying nav UL because I've got a couple I've got another unordered list on this page, and I want to be very specific that this is the UL that is under the nav. So that space after nav says look under nav for any unordered list. And I'm just going to be setting the, the background color. The list style type is how you control that bullet point. So if I look, let's see if I can get it to show me. Yes, so here are all the options that you might have for list style type. Um, and, you know, you can have disk. Um, there's many different, and feel free to play around with these and see what they look like. Um, but uh, the one that we want for this is none because we're not trying to show a bulleted list. In fact, it's not going to be vertical. It's going to be horizontal. So we're going to remove the bullets, and then we're going to clear out margin and padding. I don't have a reset um, in this particular project, but... Um, I do want to clear the map part, margin and padding on this list container. And then this overflow hidden is a way to clear the floats, which there are a couple of techniques, and we'll see some more in, in other tutorials. But this will definitely clear the floats. And that just says that I've got this container. It's got things floating in it. But when I leave the container, I don't want to be floating anything anymore. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to target the list item and have it float left. So this float left is just a float property. And let's see, I think there's various things. There's a absolute float. So you can see that we have float, oops, and float. I guess you can't get those properties. But there's a left and a right and a both. And there's, there's a number of properties. There's even a clear. But we don't want to clear inside this list item. We, we're going to let this overflow clear the whole container. So the next thing we do is we're going to, so at this point, if I look at um, what I've got, I've removed the bullet points. Like, let's just say, if, before I put this in, I'll comment that out. I At that point, I had just removed the bullet points and removed all the margin and padding. 
And then with this float, I've now got them all horizontal, but they don't really look good. There's no dimension to them. So now I want to style the contents of the list item, which is that anchor tag. And the first thing I'm going to do is uh, set it to block. So I want to guarantee that that this item that I'm going to style is block. And I'm going to give it some padding and some background color and text decoration none. And that text decoration none is part of the anchor tag styling. And it um, by setting it to none, I actually remove that underline. And then the giving it color and background color, I re, I remove that default blue. So if you see, if I if I don't have those in there, you can see that the default the browser will color a link that's been clicked purple and a link that hasn't been clicked will appear blue. Well, I want to control that, so um, I'm going to just say that I don't care at this point to show. It is possible to style the anchor tag. There are a number of, of different styles for the different states of clicking that you can control, but I just want them always to appear um, with black text and a white background or a gray background. So that's, you can see this gray, if you can see, is a little bit different than the overall gray of the entire um, of the entire UL. And then the text decoration then removes the underline. And then the other thing that I want to do is I want to make it so that when I hover over these, I get some interactive effect. And I can use this pseudo tag. So if you see a colon following it, um, a tag, you're getting into its pseudo, pseudo selectors. And hover is one of the pseudo selectors for anchor tags or for any element. So if you're hovering over an element and you, you can capture that event, and I'm going to give that an aqua color. So what that's going to do is when I hover over, you can see so that just kind of, and I get the pointer there, that kind of tells me that you know, hey, I can click on this. It's kind of a signal that it's clickable. So that's what we, that kind of takes care of our, um, of our nav bar. So I might comment this uh, nav style. And sometimes when you're working through these instructions and these tutorials, it's a good idea to mark your sections of your CSS because you can, these will end up getting kind of long. And if you need to go back and troubleshoot anything, this is a good way to locate it in your own code. So now we'll get in. So yeah, that's the comment for uh, for for CSS is just the slash star, and they can go on to multiple lines. And if you're using VS Code, you can actually just social links. You can just hit for Windows controls forward slash for Mac command forward slash and it will actually toggle it on and off. So that's helpful. OK, before we go on to social links, we do have one more thing here. We want to mark active. We want to mark active the um, nav element that represents the active page. So we're saying that we're on the home page. So we want the nav button to look different than the other buttons. Because also, if you look at it right now, they all look the same. You can't really tell that you're on the home page, you know. So you would mark the blog page navbar active if you were there, and so on. So in order to do that, um, we're going to add the class active to the home page link, which means down here in the home page. And you can see we've got that set up with uh, with an empty string for the href, so that when you click on this, it just takes you to the top of the page. Um, and these are set up like internal links. We've got the hashes. We'll learn more about that when we discuss navigation and linking. But for styling here, we're just going to add class equals active. And then we're going to go to the style sheet. And I'm just going to grab this nav link active. There it is right there, nav link active. And the thing is, we're going to, what this is saying is that. Um, that we're going to set the background color to black and the foreground color to white. So you can see that we've 
the mark that were on the home page differently than the other nav elements. Um, and so we're specifying, you know, look under nav, look under li, find the active class, and when we get down to it, we're here in the anchor tag and we'll be coloring the, the home link. And by setting our, um, we set our A anchor tag to block, we ensure that we're going to cover the whole link. So if I took that out, I believe, let's see, if we were to comment out that, you can see that doesn't look so great. Yes, we're not getting any dimension there. So you might try playing around to seeing what's the effect if I were to remove some of these prescribed um, properties. What does it do to my page? And again, the whole idea here is that you start getting a feel for what properties are going to give you the visual effects that you're trying to get to. All right. So now we're styling the social links with inline block. So let's take a look at what we've got here for social links. We've got, um, I'm going to close this up a little bit. We've got a, uh, our, our unordered list and containing list items. List items have anchor tags. And this target equals blank attribute, underscore blank, what that does is it says when you click on this anchor tag, don't stay on the same page. So this is an external link. We're trying to take you out to, to something that's not part of our website. We don't want to lose you on our website, so we're going to open this in a new tab, and that's what target blank does. So if I look at how that works, if I click on one of these, it takes me to LinkedIn on a separate tab. And that way if I finish reading that or I want to get back, I, I haven't lost my place on the page that I started in. But I want to style these to look kind of like little um, little buttons. Um, and so what we're going to do, and we're going to use the um, inline block instead of float to, to get them horizontal. So what we want to do for that is we're going to, you notice the way that these are set up. Uh, let's see, we have UL social links. So in order to make that happen, we're going to need to add social links here. Let's see. So that UL dot means I'm looking for an unordered list that is classed as social links. So instead of looking for social links under UL dot, I'm looking for it to be named, given classed as social links. And I'm going to say that the list style type is none. Again, I want to remove those bullet points. So let's do that. Format that. I like to format as I go because it can help me catch errors. So yes, we formatted it. We lost our bullet points. The next thing we're going to do is to make these links horizontally aligned and that will involve targeting the list items that are underneath the social links um, class. So remember that the, the social links class is applied to the, the list container and so the list items now will be set up as inline block. We're going to give them a width of five rem, so give them a fixed width that they all share give them a background color light blue and then we'll put the border radius which gives those curved um, those curved corners and we'll align the text inside them centered so with that yes we've got our blue we've got this we've still seen the underline um, and that, that comes by default so let's take a look at that uh, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put a hover, a class when we hover on the list item itself, we're going to make that a gray. So you can see the background turn gray. And, and it's just saying background, that's the shorthand. It's really background color to be specific. Um, and then the social links uh, anchor tag we're going to remove that text decoration and set the foreground color to black. 
So now we've got the black, we've removed the underline. Um, and then finally, we're going to do a hover on the anchor tag so that we can turn the text white when we hover on it. So again, you're trying to draw attention to the user as they move over these things that are clickable. So this is starting to take shape. Let's just check out where we're at. So we've got our horizontal navbar. We've got our social links lined up horizontally. And we just have one thing left, which is we, we want to use some positioning to move. We want to align our copyright to the left and the name of the writer to the right. And to do that, we're going to use the position property. And to use this position property, um, to set absolute positioning, this, this is absolute with respect to the container that it's in. So if I am in a footer container, um, I'm going to be setting a left top and a right top. I'm going to, so I'm going to align to the left, I'll set something relative to the left, and to assign it to the right, it'll be relative to the right. We call that absolute positioning because I'm specifying positions absolutely. And this could be done with pixels. I'm doing it with percentages here. Um, but basically, it's giving, you know, you, and try out pixels too. Feel free to try out different units on that. But in order to do that, I cannot use absolute positioning unless I have gotten out of the standard flow, which the standard flow, the default positioning is stat is known as static. Um, I have to set the container to relative. That takes the that allows me, once I have a relative container, I can do absolute positioning within it. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is make my footer relative. And let's label this to be, uh, we'll say footer positioning. And that way we can keep track of that. And we'll set the footer to be relative and about give it a background color. So that just, I didn't change the positioning yet. It just set that up, gave it a height. And now I can set up my align left and align right. So if I um, set up align left, so, and these have already been classed. So I have these two divs and they're set to align right and align left. So now I just say, I can just say um, the absolute position of the left, of this left align item will be 2% from the left and 45% from the top. And the same, similar idea, symmetrical for the right positioning. And you can see, so I'm down halfway, a little less than halfway from the top 45%, and then over 2%. So feel free to play around with those positioning, but this gives us sort of that copyright push to the left. And, and this is all about some design ideas around proximity and alignment and, you know, how the human eye, you know, interacts with with what it's looking at. So this gives us some separation there. So that takes care of that. And then once we've got all of that in place, um, we can check this in. And let's see, oh, we're up here. We can get, oops. We can go to our command line and get add, uh, get commit add horizontal alignment. So you've learned three really important ways to do horizontal alignment. And this can be used, you can go quite a long ways with just these techniques, but we'll be learning a lot more about that. All right, and so once you get that pushed up, you should be able to go, let's go find my repository skills one and my horizontal alignment. Ah, looks like it's taking a little bit of time to publish. All right, this is taking a while. I'm going to go check back and see if I left something out. So if I come back here and do a get status, ah, it's telling me that um, the branch is ahead and I need to get push. So I forgot to get push. So I'll do that now. And now we should see that. And if I look at the code, I should see that it, that my 
that I got my yes four minutes ago. So it, it did get pushed and then if I refresh, there it is. So this is what I'm after. And again, you'll want to turn in the links um, for the 3010 skills one to pick up these this work. All right.